Cups and welcome to Vlogtober episode 8. Today I am going to be doing my final reading vlog for the Sweater Weather Readathon. This is my last book for the readathon. It is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This might possibly end up being one of the scariest books I've ever read. I don't know. We will find out. But it sounds absolutely terrifying. So I think after I film this reading vlog portion, I may end this vlog on a cozy and comforting note because I feel like we're going to need it after this. So we may go to Barnes and Noble after this and just have a nice relaxing evening. But before we do that, Let's get spooked. 25 years ago, Maggie Holt and her parents, Ewan and Jess, moved into Bainbury Hall, a rambling Victorian estate in the Vermont woods. Three weeks later, they fled in the dead of night, an ordeal Ewan later recounted in a nonfiction book titled House of Horrors. His horror memoir of ghostly happenings and encounters with malevolent spirits became a worldwide phenomenon rivaling the Amityville horror in popularity and skepticism. Today, Maggie is a restorer of old homes and too young to remember any of the events mentioned in her father's book. But she also doesn't believe a word of it. Ghosts, after all, don't exist. When Maggie inherits Bainbury Hall after her father's death, she returns to renovate the place to prepare it for sale but her homecoming is anything but warm. People from the past, chronicled in House of Horrors, lurk in the shadows. And locals aren't thrilled that their small town has been made infamous thanks to Maggie's father. Even more unnerving is Bainbury Hall itself, a place filled with relics from another era that hint at a history of dark deeds. As Maggie experiences strange occurrences straight out of her father's book, she starts to believe that what he wrote was more fact than fiction. So I'm currently on page 134. I just finished chapter six and I really like how the book alternates between Maggie's story present day and then you also get to read passages of Maggie's father's book. So I think the biggest question is how much of Maggie's father's story is real and I feel like the more that we see Maggie returning to the home and experiencing her own creepy stories, it really does make you start to think that a lot of her father's story is real, which is terrifying. <laughs> so I'm going to read something from Maggie's point of view and then I'm going to read something from Maggie's father's book. So this is something that happened to Maggie when she was staying at her old home and she is staying there by herself, which she is so much braver than me. I could never do that. But she says, I'm almost asleep, lulled by nature's white noise, when another sound rises from outside. A twig, snapping in half with a heavy crack. Its sudden appearance silences the rest of the forest. In that newfound quiet, I sense a disturbance in the backyard. Something is outside. I slide out of bed and go to the window, which offers a sharply angled view of the night shrouded yard below. I scan the area nearest the house, seeing only moonlit grass and the upper branches of an oak tree. I move my gaze to the outskirts of the yard, where forest replaces lawn, expecting to see a deer cautiously stepping into the grass. Instead, I see someone standing just beyond the tree line. I can't make out many details. It's too dark, and whoever it is stands in too much shadow. In fact, had they stayed a few feet deeper in the forest, I wouldn't have known they were there at all. But I do know. I can see him. Or her. 
standing in statue-like stillness, doing nothing but staring at the house. That is just way too unnerving to know that she is not alone there. And then her father wrote um, something that he experienced uh, one night in the home when Maggie was a child. So he wrote, I fell asleep the moment my head hit the pillow. It didn't last long. At five minutes to midnight, I awoke to a strange sound. Music. Someone, somewhere, was singing. A man, his voice soft and lilting, drifting from a distant part of the house. I looked to the other side of the bed to see if Jess had also been awakened by the music but she remained fast asleep. Hoping she'd stay that way, I slid out of bed and crept out of the room. The music was slightly louder in the hallway, loud enough for me to recognize the song. You are 16, going on 17. The music was coming from upstairs, a fact I realized when I reached the other side of the hall. I could hear it echoing down the steps that led to my study. Accompanying the music, was a chill strong enough to make me shiver. Sitting on the desk, right where I had left it, was a record player. The album on top of it spun at full speed and at top volume. I plucked the needle from the record and silence fell over the house like a wool blanket. The cold went away as well, an instant warming that swept through the room. By the time I returned to bed, I had convinced myself it was all in my head, that everything was normal that nothing strange was going on at Bainbury Hall. It turned out I was wrong. So utterly wrong. I do not like that record player playing by itself in the middle of the night. So I'm currently on page 176 and something that Maggie's father wrote in his book was he wrote about how Maggie had three invisible friends or imaginary friends um, and one of them was a girl who never really had a name and then the other one was Pennyface I think that's what her name was and then the third one was Mr. Shadow and when you read the story, you're like, oh, that's probably made up because Maggie doesn't remember any of it. But as you get to chapter 10, Maggie in present day, as a full grown adult, swears she sees Mr. Shadow staring at her through her closet or armoire. And she says, this isn't real. I repeat it in my head like a chant. This isn't real, this isn't real but Mr. Shadow is still there lurking inside, not moving, just staring. And something that Maggie's father told her before he passed away was, do not return to the home. It is not safe for you. And what does she do? She returns <laughs> and it definitely does not seem safe. So yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I am on page three, 358. <laughs> this is the note that I wrote. That is not, <laughs> I wish I could say what is going on, but it's such a major spoiler. That cannot be true. I am shocked. <laughs> I am actually so shocked. I will keep reading. I will catch up with you guys in a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished the book and I have to say that was absolutely terrifying and it took so many different directions and I was not expecting the ending. I do kind of wish the ending took a different route, but it was still so shocking and so much fun. I would give this four out of five stars and this was my first Riley Sager book and 
I will definitely read more from him in the future. Um, so yeah, after all of that, um, I think we should go to Barnes Noble and be comforted by my favorite place in the whole world. <laughs>